What's going on, Jerome's? Mercifully, the NFL draft is nearly upon us, and the entire time we've been focusing on, okay, Kwesi needs to find the quarterback of the future no matter what, or the Vikings need to get back to having the meets up front, or the Vikings need an absolute true blue shutdown cornerback. And with the Vikings uh, having uh, 11 uh, as well as number 23 overall in the draft, there's a lot of options for the Vikings. They can trade up, they can trade down, they can stick and pick, they, they can do a lot of things, right? But at the end of the day, it's about acquiring talent, right? And best player available, BPA, is a fantastic strategy in the draft. Now, you have to have a little caveat with it because otherwise you end up with a 53-man roster of all right tackles and some running backs. But if the Vikings go a different direction at some of these picks – and the board playing out kind of weird, kind of funky, and some of these guys could fall into the Vikings' lap, they'd have to consider things. So we have a suite. We, how many is this? We have eight. We have eight. Hear me out, players. We're unorthodox picks, so not the quarterbacks, not the defensive linemen, not the cornerbacks uh, that a lot of people have mocked at 11 uh, or the Vikings straightening up to go get, but players that are certainly high caliber uh, that potentially could fall to the Vikings at 11 and things that make you go, hmm, like I said, it's about acquiring talent, BPA, best player available, and then let the coaches sort them out. First up uh, is edge rusher, Leatu Latu. So the Vikings having him in for a top 30 visit now. Latu, a little bit older, did medically retire once, uh, neck issues, but medically cleared and good to go. Uh, had a couple of phenomenal seasons at UCLA after starting out at Washington. A 6'4", 264, plays with power, man. Like, he is, you know, the most mature and developed pass rusher, uh, higher than Turner, even higher than Verse, uh, although Turner, I feel like, has a lot of room to grow and show. Uh, but 21 and a half tackles for lost 13 sacks, two picks, two forced fumbles, 96.3 PFF grade last year for the Bruins, unanimous All-American, and age, medicals, like, he, he's basically the edge rusher version of Michael Penix Jr., but, uh, and yes, the Vikings, they got Grenard, Van Ginkle, and, and Jihad Ward to help supplement and replace Daniil Hunter, but... You can never have enough dudes who can rush the passer. That's what it comes down to, man. And, and Latu, like the the comps of him and Max Crosby are there. Uh, I think that L Latu has a chance to be a very, very special player uh, in, in the National Football League. And he could fall out of the top 10 uh, due to those medicals as well as uh, the run on quarterbacks, receivers, and offensive tackles that a lot, a lot of people are projecting. Also, yes, so Dallas Turner, who we just kind of poo-pooed on. Uh, but Turner, 6'3", 247. Now he is... A true blue 3-4 outside linebacker. The Brian Burns comps are there. He's a physical freak and ascending talent. Proved last year that he's not just a product of Will Anderson getting a ton of attention. It was a talisman on the edge for the Crimson Tide. Uh, 10 sacks, 55 pressures, 14 and a half uh, tackles for loss. 4-4-6-40, 40 and a half inch vert. Like he, he can get it done. Right. And uh, just like we said with Latu, like, yeah, the Vikings spent in free agency uh, a lot to uh, replace Daniel Hunter. But it's a good problem to have uh, if you're finding uh, uh, trouble finding snaps for some of these guys. But uh, I do believe that Brian Flores can move things around uh, and be very flexible and get all these guys as part of the defense. Uh, next up, hear me out. Uh, first round pick at number 11. Offensive tackle Talisa Fuaga, the pride of Oregon State, go Beavers. So. He's a mountain. He, he is a mammoth. Now, you know, J.C. La, JC Latham, same vein, too. Uh, but Fuaga is, I, I love his attitude. He's 6'6", 324, 90.9 PFF run blocking grade last year uh, for the Beavers, which is which is good. It's pre pretty damn solid, man. Uh, also, zero, zero goose egg D'Angelo Russell sacks allowed in two years as a starter. Has leverage, has bend. Now, it's interesting because offensive tackle is a position of strength for the Vikings with Darisaw and O'Neal, but O'Neal, the contract's pretty sizable, starting to age out a little bit, has had health issues the last two years, and Fuaga can plug and play at right guard immediately, so you don't have to change up the footwork, uh, does play with enough bend where he'd be able to kick inside to guard, and he could be the the estate planning for O'Neal at, at right tackle, right? and also well, if you move Ed Ingram to left guard, what's that going to happen? Left uh, Ed Ingram was a left guard coming out of LSU, so you'll be fine. You'll be fine, man. But and Fuaga, uh, I I want an attitude up front. I, I want a chippiness, and I I think that Fuaga, I think he'd be perfect for the Chargers. To be honest, uh, put him in at right tackle. You, you have uh, you have uh, Jenkins at left at left tackle, so you're going to be good to go there. So 
I, ca- I kind of like it. And, and again, like I said, uh, unorthodox where, yes, everyone in the mom is mock drafting. The Vikings either trading up or sticking a pick in 11, taking quarterback, defensive line, or cornerback. Go a different route. <clears throat> I'm mad. As I get choked up. Is that you, Rana? Hmm. Uh, next, offensive lineman Troy uh, Fatano from Washington. So, Fatanu is a lot of fun. So he's 6'4", 317, has great agility, feet like a dancing bear, and uh, is able to play low, play with leverage, play on the inside. So he could play left guard, left tackle, and he did play left guard for a couple seasons uh, at Washington, so he does have that experience. And I think that he's an uber athlete. He, he does have size. He's got great movement skills. He's got uh, an anchor. And I think that, you know, a lot like Fuwaga, you know, changing the way that you do business up front, just changing the culture. I love it. Uh, 88.2 PFF pass blocking grade last year for, well, I, I guess it's Michael Penix's not blindside, but you know what I mean. Uh, and Futanu, like, like we said, has experience at left guard, could slide in right, right away. And also does give you flexibility, depending on what happens with O'Neill long term, as well as. What happens with Darisol long term? Hmm. Uh, so also sticking in that same vein, Joe Alt. Now, I highly doubt that Joe Alt is going to fall out of the top ten, but weird things happen, and sometimes teams have different preferences. Like may- maybe the Chargers, uh, they they do want uh, Fuaga, they do want J.C. Latham on, on the right side, so maybe they pass on Alt. Maybe Tennessee goes in a different direction. Uh, Alt is uh, mocked uh, to Tennessee uh, quite frequently, so maybe the pride of Totino Grace, uh, Minnesota local Smokey. Uh, all six foot eight of them falls to the Vikings. Now, you know, Alt has that size, and he is a little bit more finesse uh, of a left tackle. Uh, a, a lot of uh, a, a lot of uh, you know draft experts ha- have said that, but uh, it's okay. I mean, he, he's that prototypical left tackle. There's a lot of DeBrickershaw Ferguson uh, to his game, although. You wouldn't really call it a brickershaw passive, but in terms of frame, in terms of footwork, I, I think it certainly is there. And he is, screw all this noise about switching him to right tackle. He's a left tackle, left tackle, left tackle. Now, the problem is with the Vikings. Like I said, if Joe Walt falls uh, the top 10, uh, I think certainly he would be the best player available uh, on the Vikings board, uh, which they, they should have done a lot of work on those offensive tackles. Now, it could be valuable in a potential trade down spot as a team uh, that's looking for that uh, blindside protector, whether it be the Saints at 14, whether it be the Steelers at 20, uh, could potentially move up and go get their guy. Uh, But what the Vikings just sticked and picked. And Derrissaw, I love to death. I I think Derrissaw is fantastic. But could Derrissaw have trade value? He would have a ton. Right, and if you're concerned about uh, durability long term with Darisaw, uh, and you get Joe Alt at 11, which, like I said, unlikely that he falls out of the top 10, but weird things do happen, and never say never. Uh, I think it's a conversation that the Vikings would have to have. Also, along the offensive line, Graham Barton. Now, 11 is perceived as a little high for Graham Barton, but. He is one of my true blue draft crushes, and he showed off his physicality at his pro day. Great movement skills, great anchor, great ass, great everything, man. And he has been a great left tackle for Duke over the last couple of seasons, projected to kick inside. Uh, I think that he's basically like a reverse Elton Jenkins, where Elton Jenkins was a center at Mississippi State and then went to the stupid-ass Packers and became a great tackle as well as guard. Barton it was a ta- tackle at Duke. I think that if they put Graham Barton at center, I think that he becomes a Pro Bowl and All-Pro center. I, I truly do believe that. I think that he is freakish. I think that he's a great leader. I think that he plays with great movement and power and leverage. Uh, I, I think that Graham Barton would come in, even though, yes, 11 is very high, very spicy, but also I, I, I kind of doubt that he gets to 23 just because of all the uh, needs of the teams in the teens at, uh, along the interior offensive line. Uh, but if the Vikings decide to pass on quarterback at 11, decide not to trade up, just securing a, a very key part uh, of that interior offensive line uh, checks both need as well as a potentially best player available. Uh, last two. So we decided to get a little bit spicy on the last two because, I mean, it's it's Tuesday. Why not have some fun? Wide receiver Roma Dunze from Washington. Now, fully understand. Jefferson? Addison, fully understand. But remember 1998 when the Vikings took Randy Moss uh, at the back end of the first round? Because even though the Vikings had Chris Carter as well as 1,000 yard receiver Jake Reed, oh, yeah. You know, what's better than two great wide receivers? Oh, three. Three, three, three. So, Adun's uh, eight. Uh, I mean, everyone their mom has him slotted at nine to the Chicago Bears or maybe the Buffalo Bills trade up and go get him. But uh, Adun's is a freak. And he and Michael Penix Jr. were made sweet, sweet 
uh, quarterback and receiver uh, numbers last year. Uh, 92 catches, 1,640 yards, receiving 13 touchdowns, and... All the comps are there. Oh, he's DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, he's a larger Devontae Adams. Oh, he's Larry Fitzgerald reborn. Yes. I mean, huge catch radius. Just put him on the outside. Just let him go to work. And could you imagine a world? Like, I feel like if Sam Darnold can't win with Roma Dunze, Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, and, uh, you know, Brian O'Neill and uh, Christian Derrissaw as tackles, then just cancel the team. We're, we're done. We're, we're done here. And... I mean, this is the land of three deep. Don't get me wrong. That This would be super duper spicy. But like I said, if it's a spot where uh, if it's a spot where Adunze gets out of the top 10, I think he clearly would be BPA uh, for the Vikings at 11. So don't be scared. Don't be scared, man. Uh, lastly, so I can't help myself. So I fully understand. Tight end is a devalued position. And I fully understand that the Vikings do have TJ Hawkinson as well as Josh Oliver uh, on a premium contract. Fully understand that. Don't care. <laughs> D don't care at all. Where Brock Bowers, see him less as a tight end, see him more as a middle of the field weapon, right? So see him as a basically a big slot. See him as see him as that. Like right? you know, don't see him as a hand in the dirt uh, tight end, which he certainly can be. But in terms of his movement skills, it's kind of a shame that he wasn't able to test because I feel like he would have been a freak show, absolutely destroying things. But in, in the SEC, he was a big-time problem, yards after catch monster, uh, almost had a 1,000-yard season in 2022. Uh, last year before uh, he had his injury, 56 for 714 and 6. Uh, he is a matchup nightmare. He's uh, too fast for linebackers. He's too big for safeties and corners, and he would be a game-changer. And, yes, I mean, Hawkinson – don't get me wrong. Again, when he's healthy, he's a top three tight end, and he's not three. And also, well, basically just chalk up Josh Oliver as a blocking tight end. He's basically a sixth offensive lineman. So you're not going to draft Brock Bowers, who could be your BPA uh, there at 11, because of Johnny Munt. Like, that's the, that's the rationale, right? And, of course, off the field, it's a different story. But remember when the Patriots had uh, Aaron Hernandez and, and uh, Gronk? Gron I've been saying Tyler Gronklin for so long, I just interchanged. So, Gronk, uh, Gronkowski, matchup nightmares for days. Uh, and that's exactly what you want. And also, uh, like we said, think of Bowers as a third receiver, not just a tight end. And plus, if uh, Hawkinson is slow to come back from injury, you do have Bowers right there. And also, I mean, Hawkinson's extension after uh, one year gets very digestible. So, you could either cut or trade him. So uh, there, there's lots of options on the table and you will never go broke taking the best player available. Uh, but like I said, yeah, yes, to a, a degree, you have to put in a little bit of caveats because otherwise you end up with 53 right tackles uh, on your roster. But <sighs> there's lots of picks, two first rounders, seven total uh, and day three. Uh, so don't, don't be mad. Don't be mad. Just at the at the end of the day, supplement and free agency and then just get the best possible players onto your team. And go from there. Uh, but that's it. There's eight. Ocho, uh, eight. Hear me out. Uh, potential first round picks for the Vikings at 11. Uh, let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once worth the work, put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value. <laughs>